Hello guys, what you're about to see is one free lesson from my latest course on Laravel refactoring examples. Currently it's 11 examples published, but it's an ongoing course. So if you have more ideas what refactoring, what type of refactoring I can show, shoot in the comments below and you can purchase that for $19 single course or it's a better deal to purchase yearly membership and get 24 courses for $99 per year, also including one year ahead. So yearly membership means you will get for free everything I will release in 2022. Now this example is about controller store and update methods, which are really similar and how to refactor that in form request and how to shorten the controller itself. Let's take a look. In this Laravel refactoring example, we take a look at a typical CRUD table with create and edit capabilities. So you can add address and if we use fake filler Chrome extension, for example, you can save and then you can edit the records. And what if those store and update methods in the controllers are really similar, duplicating the functionality? Pretty typical scenario that I can see in the routes web, for example, you have a resource controller, which is cool. And then in the controller itself, we have in the store method, validation for a lot of fields, then creation of the records, listing all the fields one by one. And then in the update, it's almost identical. So validation in this case, absolutely identical. And then assigning those fields one by one with a different syntax. It's not address create anymore, but it's really similar anyway. How can we improve it, make it shorter and take those variables, for example, validations to somewhere else. And that somewhere else will be a form request class. But before we do that, like in any refactoring, you need to make sure that the feature will work after the refactor. So for that, we have feature tests. In this case, addresses test file in the tests feature folder, tests for scenarios. So user can create address. So we're logging with the user and try to post to the addresses URL and assert valid, meaning no validation errors and assert redirect. Then we assert that there is a validation error, assert invalid, if we fail to pass some field, for example. And then similar to test for the update address in the success scenario, and then also in the unsuccessful scenario. So we create a fake address and then try to update it. And there should be a validation error because some field is missing. So we cover the basic scenarios and now we can try to refactor the code and see if the tests are still passing. Important thing with test is on which database are you testing? So in PHP unit XML, I have SQLite with memory. And as a demonstration, we can open our terminal and run PHP artisan test. And there will be four tests, all pass, everything is good. Now let's try to refactor. So first, request validate, let's move that to the form request class, which we will reuse in both store and update, because in this case, the rules are absolutely the same. In some cases, they may be a little bit different, but in this case, it's more simple. So we do PHP artisan make request, let's call it address request, because it's not store address request or update address request is just general address request. Then we use that in the store, for example, here, instead of request, we do address request. Now we click here in the PHP storm and land inside of that file, change authorized to true for simplicity. And then in the rules, we just cut and paste those validation rules into here. And then we don't need to use request validate here at all. And let's repeat the same thing in the update. So change request to the address request and remove that request validation at all. Let's rerun our tests and see if it all still green. Yep, we are good. So we moved one part, the validation part to the form request, and we have already shorter controller. Now these two things, address create and update. The tricky part here is that some fields in the database have different names than the input fields. So see street name in the database, but request comes with the street from the blade, house number and just number, also country ID and country. In ideal scenario, these fields should be identical to the database for simplicity, but we need to take care of this scenario and I will show you how. Also, a few things are additional. So in addition to the request, there's user ID set automatically to the logged in user and also token. In the update, we don't have the token, we just assign the user ID as well. So we need to do some additional manipulation on top of request. So generally, if you didn't have user ID and token, you would be able to do something like this, address, create, and then request, 
validated. Validated means that all of the fields that are listed in that class will be returned and used as address create. So if you don't specify some field here, like for example, is billing, if you don't validate that, then it will not be in the request validated array. So, okay, request validated, but also we need to add user ID and token. For that, we can add a plus here. There are a few ways how to deal with that syntax, but one of the most simple one is plus, and then you add two more variables. So those user ID and token would be something like this. So we have a shorter address create instead of this long one, but we didn't tackle the problem of different fields. So number and house number, how can we transform that? And for that, inside of the form request class, we need to specify a function called prepare for validation. So public function prepare for validation, and we can transform this, which is request. We would use the merge method assigning new keys. So we will have street name from what I remember. Let's check that out. So street name, so street name equals this street. This is request actually in the form request class. And then we have house number, request number. Actually, I will copy and paste everything. So request becomes this. And then the third different one will be country, request country. Country, this country. Now what happens then? Those three new keys will come to the validation and then we need to validate street name, house number, and country ID. Let's auto format that with PHP Storm. Okay. And now we are sure that we are getting street name, house number, and country ID and we can remove or actually let's comment that out for now all the longer version and we can rely on request validated. Let's rerun the tests. PHP artisan test, all still green. So we didn't break anything. So all that's left to do is to perform the same thing in the update method. So update uses same address request and we can do address update request validated. Also, we need to add user ID, but probably most likely in most cases, user ID should not change. So I would challenge even to remove that line at all, because if that happens, then it's kind of overtaking someone else's record. So I would challenge to do that. So let's remove all of those and address save is not needed. We only have address update as one line. Let's run the tests again. PHP artisan test, all green. So this is how you can simplify the store and update method to use request validated and rules in form request class.